Welcome back. So in the last lecture, I gave an overview of what we're going to do with the Eigen System Realization Algorithm. Uh, we're going to fit a linear model, a best fit linear dynamical system of rank R to measured impulse response data for something like you know, an aerospace system. Uh, and I just wrote this down. I kind of did this pretty fast. I said, what is an impulse response in you, and what does it elicit? What kind of a response does it excite, and why? And I wrote down the answer, but I figure I use this all the time, so maybe I should be a little bit more explicit and walk you through, uh, through these steps here. Okay, so, um, so let's actually just do that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to compute this discrete time impulse response. Now, I'm using the identity matrix here for my input because I might have multiple inputs and I might excite them individually. I excite the first one, the second one, the third one. That would be an identity matrix of delta functions, okay? Um, but if you want to think about single input and single output systems, which can be a little bit easier, uh, and that's probably how I usually think about it. So single input, single output, then B and C are vectors, and this would just be a one, okay? So let's, uh, let's, let's work through this. So what, how do I do a discrete time impulse response? What I do is I basically just go through a thought experiment of what is u, x, and y at various times. Okay, so what is u, what is x, and what is y? And we're gonna, this is important, we're gonna use this basic thought experiment more later when things get complicated. Okay, so at k equals zero, u is equal to the identity. Um, we assumed zero initial conditions, so x is equal to zero. And y is equal to c times zero plus d times i. So y is equal to the d matrix. Pretty simple, okay? Now at k equals one, so x at time one is b times u at time zero. u at time zero was i, so x one is b plus my zero initial condition. So at time, okay, so at time one, my impulse response turns off. I'm no longer kicking the system, so it's, I kicked it and now it's zero. But x goes from zero to b. Now x is b at time one. And what is y? Well, y is c times x right now, plus d times zero. So y is c, b. Let me just say that one more time, that was fast. Um, y at k1 is c times x at k1, which is b, c times b, plus d times zero, because u is off now. Okay, so y is c, b. So I kick my system, I get an impulse, zero initial condition, that feeds directly through in this d matrix, then my impulse turns off, and now all that's happening is that impulse is trickling through the dynamics and I'm measuring that, okay? So now what at k2? Again, u is going to be zero for all time now, dot, 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 zero. It's always zero. Uh, at k2, this is zero. And x2 is a times x1. x1 is b, so it's a times b. a times b. And then again, all I'm doing at time two is I'm measuring a times b. So y is c a b. Maybe I will give myself the room and actually do k equals three just for... Grins, okay, so now I, my state is a, b, I multiply it by another a, I get an a squared b, and I measure it, c, a squared b, and so on and so forth. And you can very clearly see uh, the pattern here. I get kind of a to the m, uh, let's say k minus 1, b, uh, c, a to the k minus 1, b, for a generic k, okay? And so that, that's how I arrived at this expression here of my impulse response. I, I literally just did the thought experiment of what, what if this was identity at time zero and zero for all future time with initial conditions and you can just follow through all of the math. So this is going to get a little hairier. What we're going to do, the Eigen system realization assumes you can do an impulse response, but that's hard to do in a lot of systems. So instead I might feed this like a white noise input or some kind of a pseudo random input and try to back out what the impulse response would have been, or back out these matrices. And if this u didn't drop off to zero, all of these expressions would get a lot more nasty. Okay, so this would no longer just be a, b, this would be a, b plus whatever u is at this time. It would get really nasty. So I want you to think about it in the simple case. We're gonna come back to this later uh, for the case where 
these are you know u0, u1, u2, u3, and we'll write down the general expression. OK, but for now, for eigensystem realization algorithm, we assume we have an impulse response. We have this data. These are measurements. We have actually what we have is this data. And this was the impulse. So this is y0, y1, y2. I hope I'm doing this right. y3, dot, dot, dot. This is the data that we have for the eigensystem realization algorithm. We literally just have this data. And then from this data, we're going to build uh, a reduced order model, a system identification model. Okay, thank you.